Well, good morning, my friends. We're starting our day out with a little bit of breakfast at the Brick and Spoon in Pigeon Forge, and then we're going over to Alcatraz East Crime Museum. I am really excited. We're gonna see a lot of kind of crazy historical crime artifacts today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I think we'll bypass the Bloody Marys today. And today's Patreon sunglass vlog will be for Rosemary Sterling Cornelius. I hope you enjoy this vlog. Things are a cooking and I had my Mike Cousin Vinny moment where they said, do you want grits with that? And I said, yeah, I'll have a grit or some grits. All right, so here we go. Eggs Benedict and some grits. All right, that was good enough to eat. Well, my friends, here we are, Alcatraz East. I love it just from the outside. Look, we got a prisoner trying to make an escape out the side of his cell. We got a guard watching on. I'll take a look. As soon as you enter, you really do feel like you're in Alcatraz. Look at how they made their rope. I am kind of wondering why Rodney Dangerfield's up there watching us, though. Definitely can't get no respect in here. Into the prison we go. Take a look at this. It's called the Shrew's Violin. They used to put witches' heads in there. The fiddle held the arms and the head of the victim in a rigid, not natural position, causing terrible cramps and painful muscle strains over hours a day. Why don't you put your face in there? Check out those leg irons. And an iron muzzle. Look at that. That little piece inside there goes in your mouth. A lot of people could use that these days. And there's a flintlock rail gun. I, Daniel Scott, suffered the pain of having my nostrils. Look down at what? Oh, him. Kevin broaches my mind. I was a guy. Here and there, Stephen, the pocketbook or Here's a photo of an uh, Apache chief and his gun and then Indian war clubs and an Indian police badge. So they issued these beginning in the 1880s. These are interesting. These are rustler shoes. They used to put, as you can see over here, or shoes on the bottom of the shoes to throw off their tracks. So it's saying these belong to Buck Garrett. Buck was the nephew of Pat Garrett, who's credited as being the one to finish off Billy the Kid. It says that Buck Garrett was involved in the Wyoming land dispute known as Johnson County War. It was part of the posse that killed Wild Bunch leader Bill Dalton. Garrett served as Oklahoma Sheriff until 1922 when he lost the election over his opposition to the KKK. And this isn't Wyatt Earp's gun, but it's saying he carried the same model of gun. And here's the death mask of Pancho Villa. Now this gun is called the Peacemaker, especially canonized in pop culture's view of the West fast draw gunfights and then that photo is of the Dalton gang after they were killed. Now they're saying that this gun is the revolver was used in the Civil War and by gunfighters such as Jesse James and Wyatt Earp in the very early days of the American West and then this carved silver mounted horn uh, was given to Pat Garrett by Emerson Hopp, a popular western writer who befriended Garrett. And then right over here, they have some Jesse James memorabilia. This is Jesse James' slate notebook. Belonged to Ed Miller, a James gang member, until he was supposedly killed by Jesse James for talking too much about the gang's exploits. The notebook was among Jesse's possessions at the time of his death. So this is Jesse James' shoulder holster. Said that he used this until his death and an exact replica was recreated from this holster for Brad Pitt when he played Jesse in the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Now this wood says that this is Jesse James' blood-stained floorboard. They were taken from the house of George Height in Logan County, Kentucky. Height was the uncle of Jesse and Frank James, and his son often ran with the James gang. The Height home was used as a hideout, and after being shot, 
Jesse nearly bled to death in an upstairs bedroom causing these stains. And there's the home they came from. This is a letter from Pat Garrett in 1889, written by Pat Garrett. And it actually says, don't show this letter to anyone. And these revolvers were used by the James gang. So this is all prohibition stuff. And that photo is NASCAR legend Junior Johnson. He says he was jailed in 1956 for having a moonshine still. Since 2007, Johnson has been a partner in legal Midnight Moonshine. Here's a prohibition badge from the 1920s. First time I've ever seen one of those. And this says this is a Frankfurt distillery. That's a bottle capper right there. And a bottle of the good stuff. And that's a full on moonshine still. Here they're talking about how NASCAR was all started with Prohibition. That's why they mentioned Junior. Kind of ties all in. Here's a whiskey still right there. Budweiser malted extract. And then, oh, here's their Prohibition alcohol prescription that you would have needed to actually get it legitimately back then. And then this is a Prohibition door. This says this is a piece of telephone wire used to tie up a bank cashier at the New York Carlisle by a Dillinger. There's John Dillinger's death mask and then in this little glass thing has um, some, looks like eyelashes or eyebrow hair or something in there. Can't really see it probably too well on here, but I can see it. And there's a photo of him after he was killed, and this little wood gun is what he used for the escape. He used a wood carved gun such as this to do it. From a jail cell that was apparently escape proof. Says you can see him posing with this gun to the right. So here we have a case of Bonnie and Clyde memorabilia. So this case is all items from the death car. This is the Bonnie was an avid poet, and this was one of her poems. The Ballad of Donabel Lee. Clyde Barrow's rec membership card. This is the original photo found in Clyde and Bonnie's hideout in Louisiana. So here we have a Scarface machine gun. Uzi 9mm machine gun, submachine gun, was used in the filming of 1983 Scarface during Al Pacino. Pacino was carrying the gun in the role of Tony Montana during the scene in which drug soldiers sent by Alejandro Sosa arrive at his mansion. Say hello to my little friend. So this is, in 1939, Al Capone was being treated for syphilis at a Union Memorial Hospital near Baltimore in gratitude for the care he received. Capone donated two Japanese cherry trees to the hospital. While one of the trees still stands, it lost a limb in 2010, which was then used to make these mementos sold for charity. John Gotti's mask card. Oh, that's cool. These are all affiliated with Bugsy because it's the Flamingo. Bugsy Seagull. Those are melted nickels from the El Rancho. Vegas Casino. And then both of these handguns, the revolvers from the Godfather to the left and the pistol from the Godfather to the right, the 357. So this is a brick from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And then of course some bullets from the massacre. These are all Al Capone souvenirs. It says souvenirs from various offices around Chicago including the Alton, Metropole, and Lexington Hotels. It's 
now green tile recovered from Al Capone's private bathroom at his Lexington Hotel headquarters before it was demolished. And then that's Meyer Lansky's gold Gillette razor. The mob's accountant, Meyer Lansky. Now we're gonna see some John Gotti stuff. There's a photo of John Gotti and it includes a couple of bullets. The Teflon Don is what he was known as. This is Mickey Cohen's custom made suit. He was one of the mob leaders, mob bosses. That is Colt Thompson's 1921 Tommy gun. Art by Henry Hill. This is a sign check by Carlo Gambino. And so Gambino crime family. Identities from the government. Tough guys, not tougher than the law. So this is talking about the Doris Duke art theft, and this is the ransom note from it. This is Monica Lewinsky's handbag, and they have a photo of her with it. Fun fact, I met her at a charity event one time when I was working in catering. She was one of the nicest people I've ever met. She really was very, very, very nice. And here's a section on famous traders. His investment statements. Here's a birthday note from Bernie Madoff to his son Andy. Swindled a lot of money from the Mets owner. Bill Clinton's impeachment trial and a ticket to it. Why does it look like a golden ticket from Willy Wonka? They're attempting to crack this safe. I was really shocked to see this here. This is really cool. D.B. Cooper, the story of D.B. Cooper, the man who hijacked a plane, got them to give him a ton of money, then he jumped out of the plane and some of the money was found but they never found him all kinds of crazy stories and ideas as to who it was and I think they have kind of figured out who it really was it's a very interesting story if you've never heard about it I wish they had some of the money that was found here on display that'd be really cool check this out John Wayne Gacy this just like kind of sends shivers up my spine seeing his clown stuff that is nuts there's that one of his paintings you can actually buy those from him in jail he would send you a price list it's a self-portrait apparently what a horrible person most of the people in here are pretty horrible because most of them are extremely violent and they're killers but not all of them, but this is right at the top of the list of horrible people. Flowers power. Let's make the scene. Tell it like it is. Jeez. Then there's his leather jacket. It says, while it was Gacy, the clown that captured the public's attention and fears, it was Gacy, the ordinary man, in the leather jacket that lured the victims. Gacy was married twice, had children, ran his own contracting company, Painting, decorating, and maintenance was active in the Democratic Party politics and countless other organizations. It was due to Gacy's status in the community that when accusations began to surface, locals found them hard to believe. Gacy was arrested wearing this jacket. Then here's his makeup kit. Radio Shack card in there and a Hertz rental car card. This is all a case dedicated to murderers. It says 
This is a Son of Sam birthday card. David Berkowitz. This is a property receipt for the Jeffrey Dahmer for five postcards with his inmate number and everything on there. And then it's also got his signature down at the bottom. These were Jeffrey Dahmer's handcuffs. While he was at the Columbia Correctional Institution, Wisconsin. This looks like a baseball signed by Charles Manson. Who did he pitch for? And this is a card autographed by Charles Manson on the bottom. Upon further reading the baseball stories that it was signed by Charles Manson and Juan Corona, both incarcerated at the Corcoran State Prison, but it said sporting goods are not allowed, so this item was smuggled in and out of the facility. Yep, there's your prison number. So here we have some items of Ted Bundy. They have his typewriter. And then they also have, this was his one that he used while awaiting trial, sitting in prison. And they have his dental casts. Yeah, we're calling this one the Scott Michaels section because here we have some Tex Watson fingerprints. This is all the Manson murder related stuff. We have Tex Watson. Then here's some Boston Strangler items. Charles Manson's guitar. This would have been a nylon string. And then they've got the Beach Boys record that he got so upset about because they supposedly stole the song from him. His version was called Cease to Exist. Now this is kind of crazy. This is from Ed Gein. He's even signed this and everything. You can see down at the, uh, the bottom. But he apparently sent someone one of his teeth. Wacky. He's another just horrifically evil person in history. And these are the fingerprints of Aileen Warnos, the woman that the movie Monster was based on. This is another one that just sends shivers up my spine. This is from the Pizza Bomber. If you remember when they built this crazy bomb and got a pizza delivery guy to, well, they forced it on his neck and then blew him up basically, blew up the bomb. This was the uh, gun cane that they fashioned. There was a documentary on Netflix that was really, really interesting about this. And there's the, that was the neck cuff that they put on him. How horrific, how absolutely horrific this story was. And it was all like right on TV. They were broadcasting it when it happened. And the person that kind of pushed him into this was a prostitute that he was sleeping with. And they found out after he was killed in this that she was pregnant with his child. Now this is the Texas Sniper in the Tower story. And this is Charles Whitman rifle from that day, 1966. It served in the Marines and trained as a sniper. A piece of tape on the stock features his handwriting. Handwritten symbols from the gun. Oh. Adam Walsh. His father, John Walsh, was the one that hosted America's Most Wanted for many years. This is a yearbook from Columbine. That was. That was when I was about to graduate, so that really hit close to home. That was really scary. Now it says this backpack belonged to a 17-year-old junior who played on the basketball team under coach Dave Sanders, who was killed leading students to safety. Her planner reflects the ordinaries of the day and 370 in unspent lunch money, which is right here in that envelope. 
then it says she abandoned her East Pack backpack in the math class and later retrieved it from the sheriff's office from storage. It says when she returned to school, she continued using this backpack for the rest of the year and sewed this on in remembrance of her coach who saved her, Dave Sanders. And then sadly, this is remembering the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting. And then this is a ticket from the Aurora, Colorado theater shooting. This belonged to a survivor from that night. Then this is all Kennedy assassination stuff. The bullet shot from Jack Ruby's gun. This is Lee Harvey Oswald's change of address form. Well, my friends, we are going to call it a day for now. But the next time that you watch my vlog, you are going to get to see the rest of that museum. There was just way too much for me ever to be able to fit into one video. And if you're wondering, eh, is it worth coming back for? I don't know. Do you want to see the OJ Bronco? Do you want to see Ted Bundy's Volkswagen Beetle? Do you want to see John Dillinger's car? I think it's worth coming back for. So we'll see you all next time. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night and goodbye. Mm -hmm.